Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, thank you, my subscribers, my friends, and my students, as well as my relatives. Um, in this occasion, I'm going to answer 18 questions related to uh, the topic of cross culture understanding. It's about English speaking countries. I receive 18 questions from my students and they were so interested to know about the answers of the following question first i'm going to read you the question and then i will follow the questions with relevant answers if you have questions or feedback you may write your questions in the comment section below now let me start with the first question uh, the first question was raised by zulfia nita uh, she is a student in the TB, TBIA class section. Let me read you her question. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Indonesia is directly adjacent to Malaysia as well as Singapore. But why are there so many Indonesian and Malaysian cultures that are similar or even the same? Until this equation creates problems such as batik, Although now Batik is officially from Indonesia, but the people of Malaysia are also very unfamiliar with Batik. If they even feel they belong, while the culture of Indonesia with Singapore is very different, even though these two countries are also neighbors. What is the background of the cultural similarity between Indonesia and Malaysia? Thank you for your time, Mr. Okay, now this is a very interesting question. Yes, Indonesia and Malaysia are ne two neighboring countries that they are um, separated in big uh, ocean and they are located in the same area as part of the Asian countries. Asian stands for Association of Southeast Asia Nations. Indonesia and Malaysia have similarities in terms of culture, which is specifically related to Malay. But the one thing that we need to remember that although Indonesia and Malaysia have resemblance in terms of culture, but they are historically different. Malaysia is um, part of the Commonwealth country and Malaysia still relates to the United Kingdom or the Britain, while Indonesia is an independent country. Indonesia is a country of its own, so Indonesia will face uh, challenges and handicaps by its own. And the people of Indonesia gain its independence from the Dutch colonials and the Japanese colonials after the World War II. That was in 1945. So from that historical standpoint, uh, we can say that Indonesia and Malaysia might have a cultural similarity but not to the extent of the historical perspective. Now, until this equation creates problems such as batik, well, yeah, the word batik was actually derived from Javanese language. So if people ask you that where does batik come from, the answer is actually from Java in Indonesia. However, Many other places in Indonesia as well, like uh, Pandai Sike. Pandai Sike is famous for songket, and it has its unique uh, uh, form and structure of the textile. And this is the art in the textile. So Indonesia has many uh, diverse types of cloth, if you can see, around this country. Now, <clears throat> compared to Malaysia, as its name, Malaysia is Malay of its own. So the particularities of Malaysia is actually Malay only, while Indonesia is more than just Malay. If you pay attention to the island of Sumatra, starting from the north of the island, we have Achehnis, and then we go to the Borneo or Kalimantan, there we still have the people who look like Malaysian in terms of race, and we go to Sulawesi, Java, and Papua. 
Each island has its own characteristic and people as well as culture. Therefore, if you would like to say that uh, cultural similarities exist between Indonesia and Malaysia, that means that it is only similar in terms of the heritage. <coughs> Sorry, in terms of the places, which is Kalimantan and Sumatra. But if you go deeper to see Java, Sulawesi, and Papua, the cultures in these three big islands might not relate with Malaysia. If you can go search uh, with that because Papua is closer to the ethnic of Melanesia. That's why Indonesia is named Indonesia. It's Indonesia is a mix of the Asia. So Indonesia represents the ethnic uh, mixing of a condition from many ethnics in Asia. So that's why this country is called Indonesia. Now, and then I will go on with your statement. Although now batik is officially from Indonesia, but the people of Malaysia are also very unfamiliar with batik. They even feel feel they belong. So now, like I've told you before, even though batik uh, was originally from Indonesia, I assume that many Indonesians traveled to Malaysia during the past 1990s or 1980s or 1970s. During that times, the condition of the administration of each country might not like today. During that time, everything was so uh, manual uh, compared to this time in 2020, everything was done digitally and every country has its own database about the citizens. So if you would like to say that even though Malaysian are and familiar with batik, they know batik because they can find information on internet. They can learn about batik. And your question, what is the background of the cultural similarity between Indonesia and Malaysia? That was like I've told you before. The reason between Indonesia and Malaysia have cultural similarity because historically speaking, Indonesia and Malaysia were one at the time, but then during the war, after the World War II, Malaysia was still under the, uh, Brit the colonization of the British Empire, while Indonesia gained its own independence after uh, since 1945 until today. And Indonesia is still fighting for its best future forever. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, the second question. I hope that you. Sorry, I hope that you could get my answer, Zulfianita. Now. The second question is from Muhammad Fadil. Muhammad Fadil uh, is a student and to be still the same class with Zafianita. The question is, does language affect a culture and vice versa? If so, how does society receive that influence? Nice question. Uh, language, yes, language affects culture so much. For example, uh, if you go to Jakarta, will you say uh, in in Menangkabo language like this, uh, Baakaba, that you need to really pay attention to whom you speak when you visit Jakarta. Because Jakarta is the capital city of Indonesia, I believe that the city has many people coming from around Indonesia. There are maybe uh, people coming from Medan who speak Batak language and many people coming from Sulawesi, they might speak uh, the language of Sulawesi, local local languages there. And even some Papua also live in Jakarta. So depending on whom you speak, then you need to pay attention to how you communicate with them. So the answer is yes, language affects culture. And that is the example. How people approach one another is the example of how language affects the culture. <laughs> the culture of approaching people, I mean. And uh, culture to language, yes, of course. Culture influence language to a big deal. I give you an example. Uh, when you come to someone's house without even saying anything, will the home owner let you come inside? For example, if you're Muslim, you would say "Salam alaikum" when you want to enter someone's house, asking for permission. But if you go to places like uh, France or German, you need to know um, where or how the people that you will come and meet 
uh, speak. If if they're not Muslim, then then uh, you will likely not use the word assalamualaikum because they might not understand. They might not understand what does it mean, or they might just listen it for the first time. So depend on how and to whom do you speak your language. So language influences culture, and culture influences language. So they work both ways. And how how does society receive that influence? Yes, the way society influences that influence is from the people, from communication, from interaction. The more people talk in that particular language, the more that they will be able to use the language to a particular extent. I'll give you an example. I watched the Sex and City movie. If you just hear the title of the movie, then you might ask yourself, what does it mean? What is the movie talking about? Does it does it only have talking about sex only? No. Let me tell you the unique thing about the sex and the, the sex and city movie is about the setting was in New York and in uh, Dubai in Abu Dhabi. So it's very interesting. Four women who were um, close friends. One day they 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 had a good life in New York. And one of the girls had a good time to visit Abu Dhabi. Then in Abu Dhabi, they had this kind of cultural uh, conflict. In New York, they went outside with a skirt. That's fine. But in Abu Dhabi, they come to society where most women were uh, practicing Islam. So they might have different uh, connotation and influences at that point. So it's it's a very different cultural connotation at that point. So if you ask me, how does society receive that influence? Yes, society influence receive that influence from how the language is being used by the people in how meanings and communication as well as messages are being delivered and portrayed through the use of the language. All right, so Muhammad Fadil, I hope that uh, I could answer your question. Now, uh, <clears throat> Sorry, I'm talking in my uh, room, so it's uh, if you listen to someone's voice outside, so I'm sorry about that. So now the third question, <laughs> Kurnia Aprilian uh, Mirwan. So Kurnia asked me with an uh, interesting question. Currently, Indonesia is the country with the most idol K-pop fans in the world. Then from there, many Indonesian people imitate their style, sir. Okay, I pay attention to that as well. And I think I look like Korean. Do I look like Korean? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Then how should we as citizens of Indonesia respond to such a culture? Because Indonesia is better known for its Eastern culture, which tends to maintain the dress appearance. Oh, you mean modesty? Okay, now, between Indonesia and the K-pop or idol, now let me tell you one thing. K-pop came to Indonesia due to the global communication through digital media, like the one that you watch, YouTube. I don't blame YouTube. YouTube is a good medium and platform to share knowledge and information, but one thing is is that we need to pay attention to the users. The users might not come from the same cultural background. So when the users listen K-pop songs for the first time and they found out that the songs were very interesting to them, as well as the dress and cultural performance reflect new things for them, then it becomes something new. Everything new is very interesting, am I right? So now what what bothers me about this is that how should we citizens respond to such a culture? Well, that's K-pop is actually not Korean culture. It's it's art. It's the culture of art from Korea. So if you really ask about Korean, is K-pop part of the Korean culture or Korean daily life? I would probably say that most Koreans will say no. The actual daily life of Korean can be found in the Korean embassy information or the websites. Or you may ask your Korean friend, is it, does it really represent the Korean way of life? I'm not quite sure, but I believe that I don't think 
K-pop represents the Korean life. It's just art because there is a combination between the Western uh, touch of art in that video and songs, and maybe the lyrics were from a uh, Korean, including with the music and intonation, everything is that. So I think it's not purely Korean. So but the K-pop. So if you ask me about the dress, well, I'm I'm looking at this broadly as a nation Indonesia that it is okay for Indonesian generations to feel attracted or to feel like to the new uh, channel to new uh, culture and situation but we need to remember that the new things that come to our country actually are not represents Indonesian culture okay that's one thing that you need to really pay attention to now if you're going to be a teacher one day, you need to remind your students that uh, everything that comes from overseas, art, movies, songs, actually, those are the properties of those countries. If it is K-pop, then we need to understand K-pop within the perspective of Korean. If you watch Hollywood movies, then you need to understand the movie within the perspective of the American culture. So it works both ways. But as a citizen, of course, you can have your own opinion and perspectives about what you watch. And you can select whether it is good or bad. All right. Now, that my answers for Kurnia Aprilia. I hope you get my perspective. So if you still have a question, please write it down. Now, <clears throat> I move on to the fourth question. I have 18 questions, so please bear with me. Now, question number four, let me read for you. Uh, we know from Rizky Saputra, okay, we know that in Singapore, English is a second language and in Indonesia, English is a foreign language. Yes, I agree with that. <coughs> Excuse me. On the economic front, Singapore is much more established than Indonesia. So my question is, is there a connection between culture and economic development, especially culture and language? Thanks, sir. Okay, now you ask uh, three elements. First one is uh, English as a foreign language, and then Singapore or economic perspectives and uh, language or culture. Okay, if we if we link the three elements, language, culture, and then the econ economy, I think that the three relate strongly in the sense that it equips people to move forward. But if you compare Singapore to Indonesia, I think that's completely unfair. People only talk about names, right? So when they say Singapore is more advanced than Indonesia, then I would I will ask that person how advanced and in many ways. Indonesia has thousand islands starting from Aceh to Papua, Merauke. So many people living in this country compared to Singapore it only has that particular area closer to Malaysia and in that I think that's smaller than Indonesia but if you would like to talk about the GDP economic uh, perspective or economic standpoint then I would say I disagree but if you compare Indonesia to Malaysia or Indonesia to Thailand or Cambodia, that's fine. Singapore has its own and it was supported by the language of the British. So they have they have particularities of the economic support. Now that's different between Indonesia and Singapore. And then is there any connection between culture and economic development? Of course, yes. Now the handicap that we have in Indonesia is that English is a foreign language. Not many people speak in this kind of language. So whenever you travel overseas, you need to really master the context and the perspective of how using English as a foreign language. Like what I did for the first time. I went to the US and I tried to understand what is the meaning of the language that I use for the first time. Right, so we need to see that uh, in its own context, like what I have told you before. In order to understand a particular country and its circumstances, we need to see the context of the country.
if you compare Indonesia and Singapore, that's unfair because in many ways, in many other ways, not just economy, not just name of the country, I I think Indonesia has much way better than Singapore, if you would like to compare. But if you ask me, many Singaporeans speak English compared to Indonesia. Well, the answer is because Indonesia has its own language. Singapore contains a variety of ethnics, uh, Chinese and then uh, Malay. So they uh, grapple the position in Singapore, but in Indonesia, it's struggling for maintaining its economic prosperity and development. And the challenges are different between Indonesia and Singapore. Right? I hope that you get my answer, Rizky Saputra. Moving on now to the fifth question from Iqbal Romansa. Iqbal asked me a question, as we already know that Indonesia is a strategic country and this is what makes foreign culture enter Indonesia. Well, yes, yes, that's an international perspective, yes, coming from um, to Indonesia foreign culture. So what is the influence of foreign culture in Indonesian culture? If you ask me about the influence, the very basic and real example is this video. So this video that you can see my face on YouTube and you can listen to my voice and we can learn um, no matter how you live, where you are, you can still listen to my voice and everyone can access my answers to your question. That is the real example of the foreign culture. Why did I say that this is foreign culture? Because we actually live manually before, before this digital means digital apparatus came to Indonesia. When COVID-19 pandemic happened in Indonesia, we, we decide to like or dislike, we need to prepare to come to the digital era of communication. And this is the time. Every young generation will learn new skills on digital technology, but they need to remember that they have their own identity in the global perspectives. I have my own identity as Minangkabau person as well as Sundanese person. And bigger than that is that I have my Indonesian identity. Although I speak English, but it doesn't mean that I'm American. Although I speak English, it doesn't mean that I become British. See, that's identity. <clears throat> now, if you ask me foreign culture coming to Indonesia, there are many kinds of influences. It can be bad, it can be good, depending on how you see the influence. And again, it comes back to the Indonesian young generation. Will they let themselves to be influenced or not? That's my question goes back to you, Iqbal. If you, one day, if you become teachers of English, then you need to train and let your students understand that to know foreign culture, sorry, to know foreign culture doesn't mean that you become that person. I studied in the U.S. in order to understand the American culture. That's one thing that you need to really remember at that point. Now, we come to the sixth question from Nur Hakiki Putri Lestari. Uh, Nur Hakiki asked me, it's also an interesting question. I'm still wondering about accent, Mr. Chayit, and I think it has a correlation with our topic. Yes, the question is, as Indonesian learning English as a foreign language, is an accent important to us? Well, yes, accent is important because accent is a part of our identity as Indonesian. Now, I mean, should it sound American or British when we speak English or literally? It doesn't matter if we have our own accent. Thanks anyway. Okay, now my answer for your question is that you need to speak within your own pace, within your own style, like the way I speak right now. I don't know uh, which accent or style that I use in speaking, whether it is American accent or British accent. However, at least I know the way how to pronounce the words and I know how to create sentences when I speak in English and I know how to deliver a certain message to my listeners and viewers. That's one thing that you need to really pay attention to. You don't have to be American, you don't have to be British, you don't have to be Australian accents, but you need to be really on your own when you're speaking in English. Okay, so 
that's my answer for Nurhakiki Putri Lestari. Okay, thank you. Still with me, Mr. Shait. Now we come to part two of this question and answer. Now, the seventh question is from Sari Putri Ramadani. The question is, let me read you. There are some countries that have difficulty using English, even though English can be their second language. Difficulties in pronouncing words because they, the way they pronounce their mother tongue is very different from English, such as China, Japan, Turkey, Azerbaijan, etc. What's the solution of this problem, sir? Well, Sari, that's not a problem at all. Well, at, at one point, uh, being able to speak English needs clear intonation and clear pronunciation. And we have to admit that English is the language of the British and the uh, Anglo-Saxon and people coming from America or Australia or even England. The word English is the language from England, actually, right? Now, if uh, countries like China, Japan, Turkey, like you mentioned, they have their own tongue, even though they consider English can be their second language. And yes, it is apparently true that um, their mother tongue is, is not English. That's fine. So depending on the country, if the country considers English as an official language, then everyone might need to be able to use English, such as India. If you travel to India, Indian would use English as one of the as a official languages, although they also speak Hindi. Uh, in many other places, uh, they might Indian might have like uh, the language of uh, in southern part of India. They have their own local dialects or accent, but still nationally they have their own uh, national language called uh, Hindi, and they use English to communicate officially. No, that is the example. And English is the official language in India, not their second language. Okay, so that's different. But in Malaysia, English is becoming their second language because everyone is urged to be able to use the English as a language to communicate, not just in the offices. So see the difference. In India, people use English officially and internationally to communicate with uh, foreigners or visitors to the country. While in Malaysia, the minute you arrive in Malaysia, you can see people using English in the, their daily basis. That's what I'm explaining uh, that to you, sorry. I hope that you can get my explanation. Now, uh, we come to the eighth question. Still bear with me. We still have 10 more questions. From Khamisatul Husna, I want to ask you, can a country change from English-speaking country to be English culture? culture? Interesting. English country to become English culture. I think that the correct answer is that no, unless the country was colonized by the British, like I have explained to you in our online classroom before. Now, if you change the notion from English speaking country to be English culture, no, I don't think so. Uh, it can't. English speaking country means that a country that uses English as a language. In that country you can see Malaysia but uh, do you think that Malaysia have English culture if English speaking country wants to become English uh, country uh, with English culture then the country needs to adapt or to imitate the way how the British live for example like Australia Australia is an English speaking country <coughs> excuse me but you We'll only see in several places that have the British lifestyle. Actually, they have their own their own culture called Aboriginal culture in many different places in Sydney, in Canberra, and in many other places in Australia. Compared to the UK, it's originally Anglo-Saxon, and uh, England is Anglo-Saxon. It's a it's quite a bit different. Okay, Kamisato, I hope that you could get my answers for that point. Now, the ninth question is from Ririn Dinda Febri Ayu. Uh, Ririn asked me, uh, before we never learn about how to pronounce phonetic, we just learn some kinds of phonetic symbol in speaking class, but not how to pronounce it. 
Interesting. So my question is, can you give me some tips how to read phonetic more easier, sir? Because when I practiced before, it felt difficult. Yes, when you learn English for the first time, it was hard and difficult for you to learn about phonetic symbols. I learned phonetic symbols when I studied phonology in English department of English University. So in that class, I listened about the theories of the phonology and phonetic transcription. The examination was that my uh, lecturer gave me several uh, chunks of words to be written in English, and then I need to write down the, uh, the actual form of the word. For example, like man, and then I have to write the word form of the sound man to become M A N. It's quite quite hard for the first time but you need to get used to it and this is just habituation i opened my um uh, uh, for example let me show you this is i have this brochure from st louis yeah st louis museum see st louis museum um a family guide to i don't know how to show it family guide to egyptian museum um Galleries 130 to 100, 130, uh, W, what does it mean? So now the word here, Egyptian, Egypt, Egypt with intonation, it has its own particularities and rules. So in the Oxford Dictionary, if you have Oxford Dictionary, you will see that there are two, two dominant types of pronunciation the first one is the British and the second one one is American depending on how um, easy or familiar for you you may speak British style or you may speak in American style depending on how you want to convey it if you feel enjoy and easy to speak in British style then do it but if you like more American style then be American style it it's just flexible because they know that you're not at the speakers of English but in writing, you need to be consistent, whether it is British or American style. Okay, we will talk about that uh, further, about writing style, whether it is British or American style. Keep asking me questions, okay? Now, that's my answer for Prerin Dinda Febri Ayu. Now, we come to 10th question. is from Widya Ayu Felani. I want to ask about how we can practice and balance between ESL, English as a second language, and our culture. Usually, when we use or learn about their culture, but we need to keep our culture while we use English as our second language. That's it. What do you think, sir? Thank you. To, to maintain in here means that you come to the level of meaning. If you mean what you say then you follow the um, the english speaking style mostly what i understand is that english speakers like to be frontal to be direct and to be concise when they speak compared to us indonesian more of us tend to speak um well in english it was called beating around the bush just moving around and so forth like a circle and then suddenly you come to a point but the english speaking style most of them they like to come to the point this is what i'm going to say this is this is what the ideas are so go direct so you see when you speak english in a second language and make sure that you try to understand who you deal with and then who you, your opponent speakers are if your opponent speakers coming from the same background like you, then it might be that you use English within the notion of the Indonesian cultural background. But if you speak with people coming from American or British background, then you might be speaking with their culture. So think it think it as fair flexibility. Yeah, flexibility. That's that's my point. Now we come to the eleventh question. Okay, I hope you get it, Vidya. Eleventh question, Melfa Angeline. Why is it difficult in Indonesia to apply English as a second language? Is it the culture or society or something? Well, like I have informed you before, Indonesia considers English as a foreign language. It is actually um, a language was derived from the uh, interaction of Indonesia with colonizers. 
Unfortunately, at the time, the Dutch uh, that colonizes, colonized Indonesia did not allow many Indonesians to learn Dutch language. And the Japanese during the times didn't really allow locals to learn Japanese. Although some students com coming from wealthy family learned Japanese, Dutch, or Portuguese language during the colonization era. Now, the question is, how could English become one of the prominent foreign language in this country? That's a very interesting. Um, yeah, I think it's because of the historical perspective and society and um, perspectives at large. Okay, um, I think we need to discuss further in detail about this concept. Um, why is it difficult to apply English as a second language now? It's, it's difficult because in Indonesia, dozens and thousands of local languages separated from Aceh to Papua, and each Indonesian has its own vernacular languages, local languages, and their mother tongue. So if you would like to apply English in this archipelago as one big second language, then it might be challenging because in many different places, it has uh, many types of languages that you need to really acknowledge and understand about their existence. Now, 12 question is from Dodi Saputra. Minangkabau said, yang tuo lah babalia ngan mudo baru kapai. In Islam saying, whoever releases one trouble for a believer, surely Allah will release from him one trouble on the day of resurrection. Whoever makes other people's affairs easy, surely Allah will make it easier in this world and in the hereafter. HR riwayat Muslim lihat juga kumpulan hadis arba'in an nawawi hadis ke-56. Okay, now the question is, everyone in the world knows about this according to their own perception. So my question is, why until now there is still a lack of tolerance in understanding the situation of people who are given a burden by the giver? Hmm. I don't know the word about uh, the giver like you mean, but if you ask me about the word of tolerance, it's actually um, the way how we give space to other people other than us. So, us, see? So, if you live in a community, then you stay side by side with the other community, and then these two communities belong to one big nation like Indonesia, then each community must have its uh, strength and limitation. Each community should respect one another. If you talk about the Muslim community with the Christian or, or Hindus and Buddhists, they have their own particularities that we need to respect. Muslims have Friday prayers, for example. They have Azan. Uh, Catholic or Protestant have their own church. They go to Sunday school, for example. And Hindu, they have their own temple, or Vihara, and Buddha, they have their own uh, Nyepi ceremonial. So we need to really respect one another within their own space. So I think if we can reach that point, and that becomes tolerance, right? Religious tolerance. Now, even though we give tolerance to those kinds of religious communities, but it doesn't mean that they can do anything they want. Because we live in the in a country, Indonesia, that really respects the um, the archipelago and the different notion of how to live locally. So if you were born in, um, in Jakarta, for example, and then you used to live with Jakartan style, and then one day you moved to West Sumatra, then you need to realize to adapt with the circumstances of life in West Sumatra. You may not complain everything how to live in West Sumatra, right? Same thing, if you were born in this province, West Sumatra, then one day you go to Jakarta and then you stay with many people coming from different cities in, in Indonesia, then you need to learn how to adapt with this kind of culture. Like what I did when I was in, in the United States, I realized that I was a Muslim and I am a Muslim. So I met people coming from different backgrounds, even they don't have any religion or they believe that God doesn't have to be worshipped, and then some other belief about uh, being Jews or Christian. I respect their beliefs, and they also respect what I believe. So that's tolerance. Um, if they ask me question about why do I believe that, then I explain. And 
when they say that what I believe is wrong, then they become the one who did not do the tolerance. So see, you see the difference? I hope that you get the perspectives. Um, Dodi, but I appreciate and I really like the way how you say it. Yang tua dan baru That's very interesting quotation. War means old, yeah. But um, I would like to say that in a different context, maybe in the context of Minangkabau culture, which is correct, but in terms of digital like this, uh, it, it's different. Um, it, it's, I don't know how to say that in a word, but um, the war means here maybe experiences of life that they have encountered. And still like me, I'm still learning to learn how to cope with uh, life until the future. And we're still learning each other. Now, the 13th, 13th question is from Manisha Fitri. Does language affect the mind and can we think without language? Interesting. Because we often hear the term thing before we say. And does language affect our perception of nature and society? That is all. And thank you, sir. Okay. Of course, language affects the mind. If you cannot use any particular language, it means that your mind has something wrong with it. And even though someone has mind, but it doesn't mean that that person can use language well. So being use, being able to use a certain language means that you master the form and you master how to structure the message in the language and then you know how to deliver the message by using that language in a particular group of people who use the language okay i hope that you get the idea so think before we say meaning that you need to really put yourself into a situation how would people respond and react to my statement Will people like to see me or hear what I say? Will people think that my statement will be useful and good for them? That's that's good question to ask yourself before you speak. But if you being silent is uh, not going to make any better, then you need to be able to speak or say something. If your silent doesn't solve anything, then speak about something. But if you when you speak about something and then the condition becomes worse, then it is better to be silent. Now, the um, 14th question is from Monica Khalifa. Why didn't Japan make English their second language, even though Japan is a developed country? The reason is because, um, I don't know, but what I believe is, what I, I concern is that at the time, Japanese was uh, bombed by, uh, I think it was Americans, the Pearl Harbor, so the Japanese soldier put bombs in the Pearl Harbor, collapsing many ships in the harbor, and then uh, during the World War II, 1942-1943, something like that, the American soldiers and the, um, we call it Sekutu, uh, use the nuclear weapon and then throw it Hiroshima and Nagasaki, so since then Japanese didn't want to use English as a language unless they use English for international commerce or international relationship with many foreign countries in the world. Japanese will likely to respect people who speak the language more. But I think today, um, more and more Indonesian students who study in Japan might not be able, might not use English, uh, sorry, might not use Japan to speak in Japanese, but they might use English. So it's, it's it's out of respect. Uh, but if you are able to speak in Japanese, that's better for them. A uh, 15th question is from Maulani Al Mufida Manik. Speaking of safe zone community, apart from having a discussion about the mentioned topics, are there other certain things that this community do related to the culture? Mm. Safe zone community. Yes, it's an interesting uh, phrase and statement. Safe zone community means it is uh, from my standpoint. I would I would determine that as a liberal kinds of um, promotion or support because in the liberal community everyone is seen as equal in the sense that everyone is given chances to speak and everyone is given rights to live as the way how they live. So you you cannot force everyone to be like you and you cannot let everybody wants to be like you. So that's the liberal community. 
quite different from us. Indonesia, we are basically in the middle between liberal and communist. So that's why um, some books inform me that Indonesia is a secular country because the military systems work harder in here. And the the notion of safe zone community means that this is community where everyone can speak and talk about many different topics that might not be able to be spoken outside. And they need this community in order to let go what they have in mind, where they might find trouble or situation influencing them to be silent. So this communi community is really helpful for them to uh, release what they really want to talk about. That's what I think about Safe Zone Community. Um, okay, now 16th question is from Irma Indriani. It's interesting topic, sir. My question is what's the relation between culture and language? Wow. I think I've explained my uh, answers about that. What's the relation? The relationship is like this. The language influence culture and culture influence language. So they work both ways like this, okay? This is language, like what I'm showing you, this is language. And the way how we use this needs to be contextually delivered in a certain uh, situation. So that's why that's culture. So language, and then culture. So they work both ways, one another, okay? Uh, Irma, I hope that you get my answers. We come to 17th question is from Prawati. Do the English speaking countries have specific culture that make them different from the other non-English speaking countries? Hmm, specific culture, I think yes, in some part. If you pay attention to the British uh, or Queen of Elizabeth in the UK, um, you will see how the monarch family was were uh, respected in the island of uh, Britain. That's their culture, English-speaking culture. Even though you find countries use English as the same like English is being used in the UK or the British, it doesn't mean that the countries have the English culture. I think I have explained to you about this before, right, in our, um, I think it's a second meeting about uh, language and culture. Mm -hmm. I hope that you still recall that, Parawati. Last question is from Loli Fariza. What are the benefits of English as the international language of a country? There are many benefits, I suppose. The first one is that the country will, will be open to international communication with one condition is that 75% um, of the citizens are able to use the language. Uh, that's one condition. Otherwise, it's just being a um, foreign language that is so fancy well known in a country. And second benefits, I think, is that the country will have um, strong and solid communication with English-speaking countries. That's uh, for sure. Many Indonesian students learn French, uh, German, Dutch, Japan, Japanese, even they learn Hindi in order to enable them to be the representative in Indonesia in the global state. I learned English since I was in elementary school so that I can transfer and deliver the meanings of the Indonesian culture to the in international listeners. And I can learn cultures from the international perspective so that I will frame the culture and the materials to come to Indonesia within a good intention in order to build that kind of good cross-culture communication and cross-culture understanding. Okay, I think I have answered all of the questions, 18 questions. I th thank you for listening to my video. I hope that you enjoy it and please subscribe to the next video. I will be happy to answer all of your questions. Please relate to the topic of the question so that I know where you stand, your perspective and point of view. If you find misleading statement in my explanation, please comment in this video. I would be so happy to clarify or to give you additional references. Again, my answers are solely my perspective and my opinions 
If there are other things that you would like to correct, please uh, write down in the comment section below. All right, I hope that you have a good day, good day and stay healthy and please always stay yourself blessed in prosperous life. Good afternoon, good day. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sore. Uh, good afternoon. Um, and then what else? <laughs> oh yeah, we have Salam Kebajikan, Nama Mudaya, Om Swastiastu. And I'm a Muslim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.